What's been your favorite death so far? I think I liked in this one where the boyfriend turns into a car. Oh, the boy. yeah. <laughs> and then dies. That was kind of cool. It was like a prolonged kind of death. I think my favorite is still Tina in part one. Oh. In the spinning room? Like that one was, I think that's the only one that's actually scary. Yeah. Part one was the only one that's actually been scary. Yes. Well, let's talk about part five. Welcome everyone to another episode of I Love This, You Should Too. My name is Indy Spinning Room Randawa. Oh. And with me is Samantha Flesh Motorcycle Randawa. Oh, that's a scary one. It was scary. And we are members of the Alberta Podcast Network, which is locally grown and community supported. Today, as you can tell, we are talking about the fifth installment of A Nightmare on Elm Street, The Dream Child. That's what it is, right? Yes, you are correct. (laughs) So we've been going through all of them. If it's somehow your first episode, Samantha had never seen any of the Nightmare on Elm Street movies, so this Spooktober, we decided we're going to cover all of them because I really love one of them. (laughs) (laughs) And I really like a second one. Okay. Three is very good, I think. I liked three a lot. Three's a lot of fun. But um, will five hold up to those standards? We'll see in just a moment, but first, let's thank our first sponsor of the episode. And this episode of I Love This, You Should Too is brought to you by Alberta Blue Cross. Even if you're a busy business owner with more meetings than hours in a day, you can be calm and collected when your group benefit plan is taken care of by Alberta Blue Cross. Your employees can manage their own health, dental, life, and disability coverage online anytime on any device, making it easier for them and for you. To learn more and explore your options, head to ab.bluecross.ca. Okay, Samantha, this is your first time, and it kind of feels like it might have been my first watch. I'm, I'm, I've watched them on VHS. Okay. I so was that was the say, last time. It seemed like you'd never seen this movie before. I I said going in, I do not remember four, five, and six okay. at all. <laughs> and I yeah, I did not remember this. I have a good memory for movies. You do, which is why I was surprised and it seemed like you I hadn't think, seen it before. I think I was sixteen or seventeen when I saw it though. Mm. So it's been a while and I think I marathoned through all of them in a couple of days. So things blend and True. This one's forgettable in a lot of ways, but it's not about me right now. (laughs) Sam, how did you like A Nightmare on Elm Street 5, The Dream Child? Uh, Did we fall asleep for an hour in the middle of it? Because I had no idea what was going on. I know a lot of people say like, oh yeah, it's a dream. It's dream logic. No, it's shitty writing. It's like zero logic. Yeah. There's no kind of logic in this. No. So I felt lost the whole time we just rewatched it and like skipped through a bunch still didn't know to what try was going to make on. sense yeah. of what was going on and uh, we failed we failed they we failed still, they failed us yes we still have no idea what happened in this movie i have a wikipedia kind of synopsis of the plot and i feel like these people who wrote this wikipedia article article like embellished a little bit to make it make sense to yeah. make it like a readable document. I think you need to do that. Just like I was doing in four and trying to like put some logic into it. Fill in those corners. Yeah, yeah. Fit it into a plot structure. This one though, I think most of it is straight up nonsense. And I'm sure there are some real big fans out there who are going to be like, no, you just don't get it. Well, then I'm not that dumb. Mm-hmm. If I don't get it, I think it's kind of on the movie. It's on the movie and it's on the writers and the amount of times we turned to each other and said, like, do you understand what just happened? <laughs> or what? why that is happened? Is this a dream or not? Because you could never tell. No. This... Because dreams in this movie are both when you fall asleep, mm-hmm. and you can also just walk into a dream. Yes. Dreams are areas of the real world as well. Plus, there is the bell tower, which exists in the dream world and in the real world, yeah. and you can't tell where it is. I didn't like that. And also, people fall asleep instantly in this movie. Oh my god, so easy. It's such a fun thing in 
in the first one and into the third one where people don't want to go to sleep and they're trying to stay awake because they can die in their dreams. In this one, you can just be like, all right, see you later. You take one step and you fall asleep while walking. Yeah. That happens all over the place. Also, she just goes to sleep and is transported in. So it's like sleep is like teleportation. Yeah, because I think because she's a daydreamer. Yeah. But then can anyone do that? Because I think anyone can daydream if they try, no? I'd say so. That's a good question. Can you daydream? I sort of, yeah. I can get like lost in my thoughts. Yeah, that's kind of the same, I guess. Is that daydreaming? I, I don't know. I don't, we we need a sleep demon to really test it. Yeah, I, I can get lost in my own thoughts and kind of walk out the world, as I'm sure you love <laughs> 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 so much. Um, but I I don't know if my imagination is good enough. It goes back to that, like, imagining things in your mind exercise we did. Yes. And I failed really badly at it. You're just different. Yeah. I'm very different. I didn't know I was different. Yeah. I Turns out I have synesthesia. You're like a magical unicorn. Just like that. <laughs> well, let's get into things. Uh, let's start with a little bit of context. We won't do much on this one no. because whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so this is in 1989, just one year. I think it's released actually less than one year after the last one. And we're still kind of at the height of Freddy Mania. We talked a little bit about it last episode. If you want to get your Freddy Krueger album, you can get that. Your pajamas, your toys, you can call that 1-900 number. Uh, Right before this one, I think, is when the Nightmare on Elm Street TV series, Freddy's Nightmares, comes out. Oh, I didn't know there was a TV series. It's not great. Okay. (laughs) It's kind of um, like a... Tales from the Crypt style, where Freddy is your host, and he's uh, like, now look at this spooky tale. Interesting. That uh, doesn't seem great. It wasn't, but Freddy wasn't great at this time, as Mm-mm. we can tell from this movie. You also have the Nintendo game. It came out in 1989, where you get to play as some of the characters, and you find Freddy's bones, and you have to destroy the bones. Oh. But the game takes off. From part three, mostly, I believe. Interesting. Because they're like, well, that was better. (laughs) And then they are doing what they have done in the vast majority of all of these movies. They're getting to production as quickly and as cheaply as possible. And this one is still quite successful. It makes more than doubles its budget. But it is the biggest financial failure of them so far. Oh, really? Because the rest were so, so successful Mm. on even smaller budgets that this one only doubling or tripling its budget is a a failure compared to the rest. True. Because, well, it's not that good. And maybe people are getting a little tired of your annual Freddy movie by this point. The woman who plays Amanda Kruger uh, wrote a book about... Amanda Kruger's backstory and she just like went ahead and wrote a book whoa yeah it's, weird it's weird it's $50 I will not be buying it <laughs> it's funny that Amanda Kruger was I don't know 50 60 years old in the last time we saw her yeah and now that all the high school students are 25 <laughs> through 30 they're like you know what let's make that elderly lady she will also be 25 <laughs> yeah. so everyone in this movie whether you are a nun born in 1899, or a high school student, you're the same age. 1899. I don't know when she was. I don't like. either. <laughs> I'm sure there's a screenshot somewhere on the internet that tells us what year she was born. Well, we went to her grave in yes. part three, but just kidding, that's not her grave. <laughs> As we find out in this movie, it was empty. So let's get into the movie. I think we'll kind of go through it kind of chronologically, but we'll skip around because it doesn't matter and it's illogical anyways. Nothing matters. So what surprised me about this movie, not that it was bad. I knew there were going to be bad moments, movies in this series, but it's not bad in the way I thought it would be bad. I thought from where the last two movies were going, the trajectory would be Freddy becoming like essentially the star of the movie Mm -hmm. and having lots of one-liners, constantly talking and like hamming it up and being too silly. And that's why I wouldn't like it. 
But that's not what we got, no. which was surprising. But I think what we got was worse than that because that would be the expected way for this franchise mm-hmm. to get bad. And this gets bad in an unexpected way <laughs> that it just uh, doesn't make any sense, really. No, it kind of falls off the rails plot wise. It does. So this movie starts out not with our normal arts and crafts, which was sad, yeah. but instead just body parts and you can't tell what's what. And you, it is kind of creepy. You can't tell if it's a sex scene or if it's like a field of body parts. Like it, like it was so weird. You At one point you said, is that a butt? Yeah. You <laughs> because can't you tell. can't tell. But then I, in that same scene, I thought I saw a navel, but then what was above the navel didn't make any sense. Yeah. So, and then there was a nipple. Yeah. Like, what's that doing And then there? there was like hands in places and it was just very strange. I didn't enjoy that part. I think we could have just started with a nice craft. Yeah. <laughs> And then we get a shower scene, which is a direct ripoff of Psycho. And not just because, like, someone's doing something in the shower, but actual shots were taken from it. You know what? What I might do is we'll go through the plot and I'll just be like, oh, yeah, that shot is from this movie (laughs) because there's a lot of it. Movies just from the two to three years prior to 89 when this came out, there's a lot of lifted stuff. That's what you said about the last movie, too, is that there was a lot of borrowed things from new things that had just come out. Yes. Yeah. Because they don't have, like, a big team. They're not putting the money on Mm -hmm. the creative minds. They're just ripping things off. So she's in the shower, and all of a sudden, she's in a dream. Right. But I guess that whole thing could have been a dream. I guess. That's what this movie can always rely on. So if you say, hey, this doesn't make sense, they can always go, yeah, it was a dream. It was a dream. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Yeah, She was dreaming. In the shower, she experiences one of my nightmares, and that's dirty water coming up. Yes. That grossed me out more than almost everything in this movie. (laughs) But she doesn't leave. She's like, I'll just stick my hand in there. I'm like, why would you stay as it, like, encompasses your ankles? Yeah. So then the shower fills up with water and she swims to the institution? How does she get there? It doesn't matter. But then she's there. I think it's like a water slide. (laughs) Oh, that'd be fun. That would be fun. Um, So she's there and then she's transported into like Amanda Kruger's body and is then in the room with the hundred maniacs who don't notice her until she is locked in. (laughs) And then they all attack her and Mm -hmm. one of them is Robert Englund. Which is kind of fun because then you're like, oh, that's the one that's the actual dad. <laughs> that's the dad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that was an interesting callback to Amanda's origin story. Yeah, I know all of these movies are disturbing in a way. They're horror movies. But the things that are disturbing in this aren't disturbing in the fun way. No, this was like, disturbing. oh, a demon that'll get you in your dreams. That's scary. That's fun. Yeah. This one is like. What about teenage pregnancy? Yeah. You're like, ah, it's not as fun. What about, what just about a bunch the of father rape? of your baby dying? Yeah. yeah, that's not so fun either. How about gang rape? And you're like, no, no, no thank you. No. no, thanks. I'm good. Like, so it's some choices. Yeah. And, and that's why this one felt a little weird. And this whole Amanda Kruger story that they really keep coming back to, it's like, not a fun story. It's good as one line. And yeah. you're like, oh, terrible stuff happened. That's all I need to know. Let's yeah. move on. But I uh, did not need a whole flashback scene of Amanda Kruger's life. Yeah. Well, at least we cut there. Yes. You I don't see anything that. else. And then she wakes up and you're like, ah, it was all a dream. Oh, but then one of the maniacs is in there. Yes. And then she wakes up again and you're like, ah, it was all a dream. Don't fucking fake me out. That's no, cheap. and that's like the only trick that they have. Yeah, is and they like, go just to kidding. That you're well. not awake. And then we get introduced to all of her new friends, and unlike the rest of the series, there's one thing that worked really quickly. This movie got me to hate all of her friends almost instantly. Oh my god, they were so annoying. They're and everyone terrible. was thirty. Yes, there. None <laughs> of them are high school. This is a high school graduation where all of her friends. I'll say catchphrases, mm-hmm. like it's a 90s commercial for extreme string cheese or something. Yeah. They're all like, radical, up the wall. And they're not even catchphrases. They no. just keep shouting things. At but each they're not other. sentences. It's not a conversation. They're just all talking over each other. Flippity flap. Zink zoink. 
Exactly. I wish it was just sound effects. I'd prefer Me that too. more that than what's been been actually fun. happening. That would have been more fun. Um, so I did not like them. And then you meet their parents who are all just like horrible people. Continuing that long line of terrible Elm Street parents. Yes. But Greta's parents, her mother is doing a bit that is very, very annoying. Yeah. She's putting on all this affectation and I don't know. I didn't understand the relationships and the, when they're posing for this photo, right. but I don't care. No. So let's it move on. It doesn't come up again, so we're fine. Um, we find out that Alice's dad is sober, so that's nice. Yeah, and you know what? That's a nice moment. He comes a long way in this movie. He does. He has some scenes later where you're like, oh shit, look at this guy. He's like being a good Getting dad. his life together. Yeah. And he, it's kind of sad, actually. You know what? He might be the best part of this movie. He might be. He was like heartwarming when nothing else was nice. He has maybe three scenes, but each one there's something good because in this one, She's going, oh, where's my dad? That d- fucking drunk, he's gone again. <laughs> she's like... I assume that's what she says. <laughs> but then she finds him and he says like, oh, I didn't want to bother you. Like, I don't want to embarrass you. The The town drunk yeah. showed up here. So he's like really down on himself, but he's doing his best. And I appreciate that. Yeah. And he and Alice are now just like a two person household. Yes. Which is sad because her brother died and her mom was already dead. I forget what happened to the mom, but yeah, yeah I she's... can't remember. Anyway, she's not there. No. So I I loved her dad. Her dad was a bright spot in this very strange movie. Yes. So she goes to the park because she has to go to work. Alice, that is, who we know from the last movie. And she just walks into a dream and suddenly she's in Dickensian London. Because <laughs> yeah. the institution that we saw in this movie's world like two probably years two ago. years ago. Yeah. We had a whole movie in there. It was fine. It's like a hospital. Yeah. And now it is tripled in size and looks like it's in, yeah, Dickensian London. It's like a, it's like your classic haunted house. Haunted house. Yeah, but it's huge. It's huge now. It's triple the size. Um, And I don't like that she could just walk right into a dream. Yeah. That, that, that like breaks all the rules. So, so we have no rules now. No. <laughs> and there's a giant baby carriage in there kind of foreshadowing what's about to be happening. Yeah. And we get a flashback of Freddy being born? Yes. Question mark. That's supposed to be Amanda giving birth. She gives birth to a literal monster, like a little yeah. goblin creature that's running around. And Freddy, of course, was a human man who grew up and uh, killed children just because he's a piece of shit, not because he's a mm-hmm. little monster. But he was like a normal person. He worked in a factory. He had a job. Yeah. Like, he wasn't deformed and scary forever. No. No, he got those burns when he died. Yes. So that and, was weird. And I like that more. Yeah. I don't like when it's like, oh, this was all this huge, big, giant, supernatural, spiritual, faded thing. Yeah. It's less fun. Yeah. And then... Baby Freddy escapes and runs through the hospital. Then they're in a church. Yeah. And the baby screams a church apart. Yes. And the church breaks up and then baby goblin Freddy climbs into a sweater and grows up. Hmm. And one of his arms grows more than the rest. It was weird. Um, Wikipedia tells me this is the same church that Alice defeated Freddy in in the previous film. There you go. But no context was given How there. is he woken up here? Baby Freddy in a dream is born and screams him awake. Yeah. <laughs> Makes sense, sure. <laughs> what is kind of fun, though, was when Freddy, adult Freddy, comes out and goes, It's a boy! Yeah. I like that. That I was laughed. funny. <laughs> there was a couple little lines in this one that Freddy says that were pretty funny. Yeah, most of them are real dumb, though. Yeah. That was one of my favorites, though. And his mom says, You are a curse on humanity. Which is, that's probably why Freddy turned out to be a dick. Because his mom was mean His mom kept telling him he was a curse on humanity. <laughs> True. And then Freddy says, we'll see, bitch. <laughs> he called his mom a bitch. I know. That was wow. my reaction was like, don't call your mother a bitch. <laughs> you were just born. <laughs> um, so Alice wakes up from the stream and she calls Dan. Who's that? She does get one very oh, yes. important piece of information before she wakes up. Amanda says, 
screaming for my earthly prison. K okay, bye. Yeah. <laughs> what? What does that mean? As she's being like dragged out of the room. Yeah. Yeah. So just store that away for later yeah. because that may or may not be a thing later. <laughs> and then is it time for a pool party? It's time for the graduation pool party, which looked fun. Yeah. Like I'd go to a graduation pool party. Sure. Um, and Dan is there and this is back before cell phones. So she has to just call the school pool repeatedly until someone picks up, which is wild to me. And her friends, I guess we didn't really talk about them. No. There's Greta, who is a model. Yes. And there is Mark, who is like a comic book artist kind of guy. Yeah. And there is Yvonne, Yvonne who is... Either or swimmer or a diver, the movie can't decide. And I think the movie thinks it's the same thing. Yeah. Because they both use pools, so whatever. <laughs> yeah, she does something in a pool, something sporty in a pool. Because she says she's on the swim team, but she only ever practices diving. Yeah. And then she's also a hospital volunteer. Volunteer? I think she works there. Or I think she's a she's a sonographer. ultrasound <laughs> tech. Yeah. A stenographer. A sonographer. Oh, I thought you meant she was like working in a courtroom typing stuff. No, out. sonography is like ultrasounding. I don't know why Dan, this college recruited, most popular kid, super handsome quarterback, hangs out with these assholes. Right? Because they're seems, all annoying and terrible. They seem like the not cool kids. And no. Dan seems like he would be with all the football jocks and like the cheerleaders. Well, we saw last year he is the most popular yeah. kid in school. And everybody wants to cheer him while he goes to the bathroom. Yes. No, that was her brother. <laughs> oh, that was her brother. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Nobody wants to cheer Dan. I guess not. So Alice calls Dan and he is going to go out there and help her. And he gets into a truck and he just came from a pool party. So he's probably pretty amped up. He's going to go save his girlfriend. Bam. Falls asleep instantly. Three seconds. What the fuck, Dan? Get it together. I often fall asleep as I'm buckling my seatbelt. Yeah. He falls asleep as soon as he starts driving. Yeah. So, of course, Freddy <laughs> appears in the car. He finds the champagne and then he pours it on his shoulder, which cuts his arm off. And then he uses that arm, attaches one end to the car, and plugs the other end into the seatbelt, making a seatbelt for himself out of his severed arm, which was melted off by champagne because, sure. Is champagne is acid? I guess. That's scary, right? What if champagne was acid, bitch? <laughs> I don't know. Like, it doesn't make any no, sense. No, it makes no sense. It's a bunch of nonsense. But then he crashes the car. Uh -huh. He goes flying out and he lands in the pool where he just was. Yeah. If you're gonna, you can do anything in a dream. And they're like, what if he goes back to where he just was? <laughs> the Isn't loop that scary? didn't work last year. Yeah. In the movie, it did not work this year again. So then what's he do? He's gonna leave again. But this time he gets on a motorcycle. Yes. And the motorcycle turns into Freddy, and Freddy talks through the wires. Yeah. And then it gets very Cronenbergy. And wires and valves and stuff from the motorcycle start attaching into Dan. And yeah. he turns more motorcycle and the motorcycle turns into flesh, which yes. was cool, I guess. It was a cool way to die. Like, it was imaginative. Someone had a good idea for a death that wasn't like all the other ones. I don't know if it was a good idea for a death. I think it looked cool. And if this was your villain or hero... Mm -hmm. I would watch this, like this guy on a flesh bike that's also part machine himself. Yeah. That's interesting, but it's not a way to kill someone. No. The way to get them is to turn their motorcycle into flesh. Yeah. While like in part three, all of those were imaginative ways to kill a person. This mm -hmm. is just like uh, something that somebody thought would look cool and then let's make him dead at the end. Yeah, and we have the like ability to yeah. create that. Good effect doesn't really make any sense. I think this only comes up because earlier on they say, oh, you know, Dan, he has a need for speed. Yeah. So then in this, Freddy says, oh, he got a need for speed, which was uh, the popular line from Top Gun, which I think came out like a year before. <laughs> <laughs> I'm enjoying this, like, walk through movie history. Although, if I get any of the years wrong, you know what? Forgive me. I don't know the years these things came out. We were babies. <laughs> we were babies. Literal babies. 
And throughout this whole motorcycle sequence, Freddy's yelling out one-liners, but they're not actual one-liners. Like in the past, somebody died in their waterbed and he goes like, talk about a wet dream or whatever yeah. it is. Like it's stupid, but it makes sense. Right. In this one, he just keeps going, fuel injection, fast lane. Oh, so he's like reading a car manual. <laughs> it sounds like he's the voice in a driving video game from Japan. Mm, of just yeah. like shouting out nonsense. You're like, like this is something that I've read on a English sign. words. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that was... Um, I don't remember how he gets from the motorcycle and in, back into the truck. Well, he he doesn't because okay. the motorcycle, I guess, is dream world and the truck was real. So then you just have him crashing and that's mm -hmm. like the real him. And the crazy truck driver from this other truck is dressed like Freddy also yeah. and just comes and starts yelling at Alice. Oh, my God, what are you going to do? Like, leave this poor lady alone. Okay. Her, her boyfriend's dying. Because there's a semi-trailer head-on crash right on Main Street in front of the diner. Oh, yeah, it was right there. It just, like, happens to be right in front of Alice's work. And then she sees Dan and Freddy, like, reanimates Dan's corpse. I can't remember what he says. He says something you about You want to make some babies? Yes, that's right. And then she faints and wakes up in the hospital the next day. Do you find out that she's just a little pregnant? Just a little pregnant. <laughs> and everyone's being very mean to her. They're yeah. like, whoa, whoa, calm down, lady. She just saw her boyfriend die and learned she was pregnant. And everyone's like, wow, what's the, what the fuck's wrong with her? Why is she being such drama queen? And I assume she was unconscious for most of the night. Yeah. <laughs> right? Big day. Yeah. Also, many of her friends have died in the last year. She's had some like, she probably should be living in a therapy place because. From part three, that's a better movie. Yeah, because she needs some like round the clock attention, I think. And then she sees a kid who we learn is named Jacob. And he's creepy. And he, yeah, some creepy kid. And he's a real creepy kid. And she tells her friend, Yvonne, who works there, like, oh, I saw this kid. And she's like, no, you didn't. There are no kids there. There's never been a kid there. There's no child ward. There's no children visitors. Never happened. Fuck you. Like, Yvonne is too serious. She's so aggressive. Yeah. Whenever... I guess none of her friends believe that Freddy is real, mm -hmm. which is odd because a bunch of people at their school died from him. From Freddy. Last year. And you'd assume that they're like teenagers talk. Yeah. You'd think that you'd at least hear like a rumor about someone. And the fact that Freddy was a real person mm -hmm. who murdered a bunch of people. You'd Who's, think they'd know that. And their parents killed him. And then he came back, murdered a bunch more people. Yeah. Then he came back, murdered a bunch more. And then four or five times. This is like five years in. Everybody Especially should know. a bunch of it happened at this school yes. last year. But anyways, they don't know about it. They don't believe. And Yvonne, for whatever reason, when confronted with anything that Freddy could exist, just gets real angry and real in Alice's face. Yeah. And like Yvonne is like, no, I'm not listening to this. No, thank you. Yeah. Um, Mark and Greta are like a little bit more into it when she tells them. Yeah, Mark turns around later. At this point, they're still not. No, into they're it. like, oh yeah, maybe. Um, but Yvonne is like, mm, it's not true. Yeah, you're crazy. <laughs> and then another nice thing with the dad because she asks her dad, like, oh, are you disappointed in me? Mm. And the dad's like, no, it'll be a nice. I hope it's a boy. It'll be nice to have another boy again. Yeah, because her brother yeah. died. He's like, I want to hear a boy playing in the house. Yeah, that's sweet. That's really nice. It was, a, it was another touching dad moment, and that he's like, I'm not disappointed in you. Yeah, we'll make it. We'll make it happen. Want to go from nice moment to something completely nonsensical and super annoying? Yeah. So Greta is having dinner with her family, and they're pushing her real hard to be a model. And it seems like a dream already She when she's awake, because she yes. will fall asleep. How it's set up is very much over the top. Is it a little bit like Beetlejuice? It was super okay. Beetlejuice. I made a reference. <laughs> <laughs> the mom is doing her best Lydia Dietz impression. She really is. And let me tell you, she's no Catherine O'Hara. No. She Nobody is, is Catherine terrible. And Catherine O'Hara is the best. So <laughs> she's doing her best Lydia Dietz. And then instantly Greta falls asleep. Yeah. 
she's just nobody's talking to her for about seven seconds so and she, she like falls turns asleep. her head to the side and falls asleep yeah at a dinner party with i don't know 15 people yeah there's a lot of people at that dinner party within the first few minutes she just falls right asleep yeah and they do this thing that i hate it happens in a lot of bad movies a lot of bad tv shows too when you go to a dream world a different dimension a different planet where one person is just there and everyone is just going and laughing. Yeah. Maniacally laughing. There's a whole table of people and they're all like, ah! Yeah, that was and weird. It's very, very annoying. Yeah. I really hate that. That's what I, I hated most about the first season of Star Trek The Next Generation. It's too much of that. Too much table laughing? There's too many, like, cues people. They're always just laughing. It's stupid. <laughs> I don't know what you're referencing. So. It's probably for the best because <laughs> okay. it's stupid. Okay, I hear it's stupid, so that's fine. And then she falls asleep, everyone's laughing, and Freddy the waiter comes up and says, eat this, and he feeds her a few things. And this did get cut down. We got to see the um, some uncensored stuff where she's being fed like her own, yeah, her own intestines organs or whatever it is. That uh, was pretty gross. It's not as disturbing as the mask they put on her. Yeah. They make her cheeks really big. And she just looks kind of food oozing. Yeah, it looks very reminiscent of um, Garbage Pail Kids, the movie, (laughs) which to me is the hardest movie I've ever gotten through in my life. Whoa. Is it real gross? It's gross in ways that I can't deal with. Ooh. I think a lot of other people are like, no, it's funny. Like, people, so like a it's lot a of bare feet and dirty shower water and like... That level of stuff, yeah. The shower curtain touching you. Oh. <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm trying to podcast here. <laughs> but that also, I think, maybe came out the year before. Oh, okay. I'm not sure, but it's... Oh, I hate that movie so much. It was so also much. not very good makeup. No, I like didn't you could think so. see the seams like on the tops of her cheekbones and stuff. And I was looking at that, and I was like, everything else in this movie has been super well done, and this just seemed of way lower quality. And it seemed like a hard mask. Yeah, it doesn't seem like makeup. Why do her cheeks get big because she's eating too much? Um, like, or they could make her get bigger, like that. Um, Monty Python bit where the guy like explodes. Oh, yeah. You could do that, but just her cheeks get big. I wonder if they were trying to play off of like her fear of getting fat. Well, yeah, that's that's what I thought, but she didn't. No, her face got fat. And I think she's supposed to look like one of the porcelain dolls. Oh, yeah, maybe a little bit. Why would you combine those two things? It, it was, doesn't... No, it was a weird choice of things. They're like, okay, she, let's give her a bunch of dolls. Oh, are the dolls going to come to life and be all scary? Mm-hmm. No, no, no. She's going to eat too much, and then her cheeks will get big, but they'll kind of look like porcelain too. Yeah. Get it? No, nobody gets it. I was also thinking that maybe it, her face got all grotesque as like because her mom is always telling her that that's like, her best asset. Sure. It's her only asset is your face. You're pretty. So, and then she... And her body, because yeah. an adult in the real world says, like, wow, you got a great body, lady, <laughs> at the <laughs> table with gross. her Gross. That's gross. So this is another, op- like, a moment where the adults can't see Freddy, but the kid can. Yeah, well, because she's asleep. Yes. But in her sleep, she comes through Alice's fridge, not unlike yeah. Ghostbusters, oh. which has a haunted world in the fridge And as when well. did that come out? Hey, Google, when did Ghostbusters come out? In the United States of America, Ghostbusters was released on June 1st, 1984. There you go. So, um, yeah, it could be very well be from there. Yeah. And, like, how would Alice know that that was Greta? Yeah, that's a good point. Because she doesn't look like herself anymore. No. Other than having, like, the same colored hair. I'm I'm doing too much work for the you movie are. now, but she does expect all of her friends to start dying now because it happened last year. Mm, yeah, true. So, so that kind of she's on the lookout. Yeah, maybe she's like not another set of friends. Yeah, <laughs> but either way, in the real world, she just chokes to death, mm. and she chokes in a weird way with her arms like being outstretched to her sides she, rather than like she's being hung like a marionette. Kind she of? looked like in part three. Where that boy is, like, having his tendons pulled out. Yeah. Or was that part four? Three. That was three. Okay. Um, so that was, like, another example of how adults can't see Freddy. And um, I thought it was, like, a kind of a cool callback to part three, but kind of an unnecessary one. 
And then fast forward, Mark, the comic book guy, lives in a warehouse? Yeah. He, like, lives in the back of a Costco. (laughs) That was strange. And then he gets pulled into a comic just like that AHA video, Take On Me, which came out a couple years earlier, so (laughs) that makes sense, too. And then Alice just draws herself into it. Yeah, so she can just, like, draw and then write her name over it, and then she's in the dream. Yeah. Okay. You sure? So you can draw into a dream. You can walk into a dream. You can choose your way into a dream. You can jump into a mirror into a dream or you can go to sleep. Yeah. Or you can like choose to go to sleep and you'll just automatically be in that dream. So is the dream, the big dream, is that happening for all of these kids at any time? Like, can you just enter and exit the dream at will? I think Alice can because she is a dream master. Right. I'm not sure. We discussed last time that your high school education was sadly neglecting the dream master portion, unlike Alice who studied dream masters. I did not learn about that. Yeah, I I don't know. I don't know what school you went to. You weren't in the Catholic system, were you? No, I was not. Oh, weird. I thought you'd cover dream masters. (laughs) Um, So Alice requests that Yvonne gets her a sonogram. Yeah, because she's an ultrasound tech. Yeah. She's wearing a candy striper uniform. Yeah. And candy stripers generally have like a book cart and just like go and chat with old people, basically. Well, she's also a person on the swim team who mostly spends her time in the air. So, like, (laughs) you know, she can't be penned in by your definitions. What can't Yvonne do? Uh, And so. Be nice. Yeah. Yvonne. Listen. You can't listen. Yvonne's like turning knobs and stuff on the sonogram yeah. machine. That's like a four year course to become like an ultrasound tech. Nah, she's fine. She's got it. <laughs> she graduated <But> then, yesterday. <laughs> so I guess we go into the sonogram machine because it has like digital distortion in this yeah. world. But we also get a shot going through what I assume is Alice's vagina. Yeah. Because we go through this long, like, fleshy canal Tube, yeah, yeah canal up into where the baby is so, yeah. yeah so i guess we went through her vagina through <laughs> her cervix yeah. and yeah. in there so we're in there and um alice is in her own womb as well but she's like kind of <laughs> staticky and the baby's in there and that's baby jacob we assume yes and also freddie's just hanging out too He's and like... freddie is like feeding the baby souls through the umbilical cord right which is not how that works but <laughs> how, how what works that's not how soul feeding works yeah how no, does soul feeding work i meant that's not how umbilical cords work but that you can't put souls through them no i think you can i'm pretty sure you can okay. how does a baby get its soul a magic i think the mom has to eat a soul and that's how your baby gets a soul so like every pregnant mother has killed somebody and eaten their soul they don't have to do the killing oh so you can get souls from other places can you yeah, you can sell your soul. Oh, so maybe you're just going and buying one of those. Sure. Pre, pre-bought soul. Yeah. Oh, okay. Pre-harvested. Pre-harvested. Ready for you like a grocery store. That's cool. And then after this, the doctor's a dick and calls Dan's parents and says, like, uh, she asked about babies dreaming, so you should probably take this baby out of her. Yeah. <laughs> we get this whole scene of... Alice being like interrogated by Dan's parents like what's your plan what are you gonna do I think we should have the baby give us the baby yeah and it kind of seems like they mean now yeah it all They're seems like, very we, immediate we have a claim to that baby but the baby is inside of her and you know who has a claim uh the person who yeah. surrounds the baby and the baby is a part of yeah maybe they have a claim maybe I don't they have know. a claim yeah at that whole sequence there was a good bunch of mother paranoia horror movies in the 70s like mm. your omen and your rosemary's baby right. where everyone's kind of out to get them and no one really believes the mom so it right. kind of is reminiscent of that you know how pregnant women are. Always, always harboring demons. <laughs> people are always taking their babies and have big, giant, evil plans for them. Yeah. That's what I've learned, at least. So now Mark is on Alice's side because he's met Freddy. Yvonne um, still won't believe and no. gets really angry anytime you say anything. Like, so it, Yvonne doesn't believe until the very last second. Until she meets him yeah. in a dream world. And almost dies. Yeah. Um, so Mark has all this research and, um, somehow they realize that Amanda was trying to stop Freddie. 
So Mark and Alice are doing all this research, and Alice says, oh, the nun said, find my final resting place. Right. And they realize that she's trying to stop Freddy and kill him, basically. How? That doesn't make any sense. No. So they investigate where um, nun Amanda would have been, and Alex just... Our Alice just goes to sleep. She just gets into bed and goes to sleep and is transported and um, is trying to find Amanda at the asylum. So then I think when Alice is in that bell tower looking for Amanda Kruger's body to free her mortal bones? Yeah, or to like ask her a question? I don't know. Yeah. Yvonne decides to go swimming, but she's not a good swinger, swimmer because she goes straight to the hot tub yeah. and goes, puts her head under the water in a hot tub. Which is not something you should do. And goes to sleep underwater. Yes. Instantly. Instantly. But she's surprisingly fine for sleeping underwater. So then she has a dream where she is going to the diving board. Still hasn't done any swimming. No. Miss Swim Team. We've never seen her Just in like the water. Just like the lady who always talked about working out and never worked out. Oh, yeah. This is <laughs> another weird. one where she's yeah. like, man, I swim all the time. I have practice all the time. Never swim. We never see her in the water. Not the swimming pool. Not the least. swimming pool. Yeah. We see her in the jacuzzi. And the diving board has claws and she drowns or something. But then... Alice, who is in the dream bell tower, not the real bell tower, yeah. pulls Yvonne in there. And then Freddy is real scared that his mom might be there. <laughs> so he runs away. Yeah, he like shuts the door behind him. So My notes, which follow. explain it, I think, better than I than either of us could, <laughs> says Freddy is scared of his mom. And his mom is sometimes in the dreams, but sometimes not. Maybe she's somewhere else. Maybe. I don't know. This is fucking bullshit. <laughs> That's what my notes That are. end. <laughs> This is fucking bullshit. I, but this Mark, is the hardest one to do. Because if we explain the plot, which we are doing, it sounds like we're crazy people. It sounds like we It sounds like we're idiots, yeah. yeah. But this doesn't make sense. And maybe we should have just done something else on this episode and just said, like, here's our favorite parts. Here's the worst parts. <laughs> Goodbye. It's been 10 minutes. But Mark is awake because he's staying awake for Alice. Mm -hmm. But then while awake, he gets pulled into a comic book. Yes. That's a weird one because only Alice has gone into stuff while awake so far. Yes. The comic book world is just black and white, but he's in color like a comic book. Yeah. That's not how comic books are. No. And like, oh, and we also have skateboarding Freddy. Right. Why? Was this like the beginning of skateboarding? Well, clearly not the beginning, but maybe a, like increased popularity yeah, for like sure. Yeah, it was cool, and so yeah. they're like, uh, let's have him skateboard because yes. that's what's cool now. Yeah, absolutely. And then my next note here says, "Remember when you thought part two was bad?" <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love when you leave yourself notes in your <laughs> podcast notes. <laughs> <laughs> and wow, simpler times. Oh. Part two. I thought part two was the bad one when we watched it because it's not as... I only remember one, three, and seven. Right. And it's not as good as those ones. Mm -hmm. So I was like, wow, this one's shitty. Little did I know. It gets shittier. And I uh, messaged friend of the show, Galen Pendleton. I said like, oh, we just watched part five and it was such shit. And he says like, yeah, wait till you get to part six. Oh, no. So I'm concerned. <laughs> oh. I'm concerned. Yikes. Um, but anyways, then... Greta is back, but she's a porcelain doll made filled with jam, but whatever. <laughs> and Mark turns into, I guess, what he considers a superhero. Yeah. And uh, he has some guns and he says, time to die, you Scarface limp dick. <laughs> because that's a fun a, line. Another fun line, yeah. And then Freddy turns into Super Freddy. And I kind of like the design of it. It was fun. It, it looks cool. Yeah, no, and I liked the that it looked like a film noir. Yeah, I don't think it was supposed to, but it did, and it I did. liked that. Yeah, yeah, it looked like a '40s superhero. Yeah, where they're like, "I'm gonna get you." Yeah, because he was like half detective. Yeah, half, but I don't know what they were going for. No, me neither. Um, either way, he says, "I'm Super Freddy, faster than a bastard maniac." What does that mean? Is he a bastard maniac? Yeah, but he's faster than one. But he is one. I think Super Freddy is faster than regular Freddy. Okay. Oh, so he just means I'm a little faster now. Yeah. 
Oh, well, that's a very disappointing, but uh, <laughs> but sensical sensical. explanation yeah. for that. I think he's just like, now I'm fast. Yeah. Because someone's going to be like, no, get it? He's like Superman, faster than a speeding bullet? And I was like, yeah, I get that. But faster than a bastard maniac is not like a fun pun or a play on words no, or anything. That's just kind of a descriptor of Freddy. It's just stupid. It's stupid. And anyways, this Mark turns into a drawing or something, and then he gets cut up and the paint links out of him. Yeah. Let's move on. <laughs> Yvonne wakes up in the hot tub and we find out that Mark dies in the real world where his, when his warehouse home collapses on him. Yes. But Alice, who was like four feet away, is fine. Yeah, somehow. Whatever. Whatever. We get we get to see the like emergency people are looking for him in the wreckage. Yeah. But let's just fast forward to going back to that big giant Dracula castle, which is the institution mm -hmm. and is a very, very clear painting. But <laughs> whatever. You were like, I just remember when we were watching, you were like, and so now she's gonna walk into the painting? So at <laughs> first, because the visual effects on the last couple of movies uh -huh. have been good. Yeah. So the painting was so clearly a painting, I thought they might be doing a bit that she goes into a painting world because we went into a comic book world. True, true. But yeah, it was very clearly a painting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was kind of a letdown after um, the effects had been getting better mm -hmm. and like more realistic and like looked cool. This was weird. And it's just strange that it's a gothic castle when we have already established this building. This building has been in the yeah. movies. So it seems like it's already a dream Yeah, when you get there? Yeah, this is like built in the 1950s, two movies ago. So Alice goes into her dreams, but Yvonne goes to the real bell tower. I think so. Yeah. And Alice impales Freddy with a big spiky baby carriage. <laughs> and then Freddy is locked in that institution, the dream institution, yes. with his 100 wow. dads. And for some reason, he's scared of them, and they're going to get him. I don't know why he'd be scared of them. Yeah. They're Freddy... dream maniacs, and he's like king dream maniac. Yeah, he's like scarier than any of them. Yeah. One of them is literally him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're his dads. I'd watch that sitcom. Um, my 100 dads? My 100 dads. Yeah. Do you remember my two dads? No. Yeah, me neither. It was before our time, but it existed. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so then it turns out Freddy is made out of spiders because he's ripped apart and he turns <gasps> into spiders. Ugh, this was the grossest. Those cartoon spiders? Yeah. Oh, they didn't bug me too much because no. they looked very much like cartoons. <laughs> and then we're like, oh, he's dead. It took the things that created him to destroy him. The end. Just kidding. He's around the corner. Yeah. No big deal. Freddy's back. <laughs> so why? Why? Why any of that? And then we have this very M.C. Escher-esque scene where yeah. with all the stairs. Also very reminiscent of Labyrinth, which I think came out about two years <laughs> earlier, which has the same thing. Uh. And it's shorter and a little more well done, I'd say. <laughs> that scene goes on for too long. Could we just tell people not to watch this one and to just watch Labyrinth? I'll just give you a list of seven <laughs> movies that this ripped off that are all better. Okay, great. <laughs> So Jacob is down there, mm -hmm. and Alice knows that, yeah, you are my baby, but you're like eight now. And he's like, kind of got Freddy face. Oh, yeah, that's coming. <laughs> yeah. But why is he eight? Yeah. He could be any age. Yeah. I think it would be funny if he was like 32. Yeah, he's just like an adult. <laughs> he's wearing like a bathrobe and has a coffee mug. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, hey, I'm your kid. <laughs> Jacob, that's me. <laughs> We're out of coffee. Mom. <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> Alice tells him, he can't hurt us. He needs us. Yes. And they're like, oh, okay. And then Freddy pops up and they're like, ah, Ron, he's going to kill us. And then he tries to kill them. Yeah. But he needs them. Remember and aren't how they three in... seconds ago he needed them? Yeah. <laughs> that was, yeah, that was a weird scene because it contradicted itself with every new thing that came into the scene. Oh, well, speaking of contradicting yourself... <laughs> So then they can't find Freddy and they're after him now, even though they were just running away from him. And she can't find him. And Jacob goes, he's inside you. That's where he likes to hide. Since when? That's gross. But anyways, she says, how? And he goes, it's easy. He knows you. 
And we're what like, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, that's how. That's how he's inside of my physical body sometimes. Yeah. Because he knows you. And then for some reason, Freddy comes out of Alice? Yeah. In the dream? Yeah. Why? I don't know. That's never been a thing before. No. He came out of that guy in part two because he was coming into the real world. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> And then meanwhile, in the real world, Yvonne bursts through a wall and there's a skeleton that turns to you and gives you a jump scare. But then really quickly, it turns into young Amanda Kruger. And then she goes, thank you and disappears. Yes. What did Yvonne do? I don't think she did anything. I think she just found her. But we've been in that tower before. Yeah, because like Yvonne reaches. I know we have. Yvonne in part three, it's a big part of it. And touches Amanda's shoulder, what we assume is Amanda's shoulder. And then the skeleton turns around. Yeah. And then turns into Amanda. And then the robes drop to the and floor. And then just disappears. And yeah. Goes, Thank you. Yeah. That didn't make any sense. I did not understand what was going on in that scene. And either. then she's teleported into the dream world. Yeah. And proceeds to talk to Alice's unborn child. And says, like, you're the one who has to stop Freddy, fetus. <laughs> and the fetus is like, okay, I got you. Watch this. And then goes like, hey, Freddy, I'm a Freddy too now. Yeah. And has, like, Freddy makeup. Yeah. Because he's been burned in a fire, I guess. Yeah, this little Jacob, who was already creepy, now has creepy Freddy face. And he does a voice. And he's got this, like, yeah, Freddy voice. And I thought it was hilarious, but I don't think it's supposed to be funny. I thought it was funny, too. Because it's, like, so ridiculous to hear this little kid making Freddy voice. And how does Freddy die in this one again? He's absorbed back into his mom. Well, be before that, <laughs> Jacob says, school's out, Kruger, and shoots, like, a flesh worm out of his mouth. Yeah. And then the dead souls pop out of Freddy's back. Yeah. And drag baby freddy goblin yes. out of big freddy. big freddy so freddy gives birth to his himself yes and then that goblin baby goes into amanda's womb i guess yes so freddy's his own father well, uh, and the mother like is jacob the fetus from alice and then the baby gestates in Amanda. Yes. Okay. And then the Jacob baby goes into Alice. And oh, yeah. Now Jacob's one month old. Yes. Why? <laughs> Why that arbitrary age? Yeah. And then all the, like there's this magical scene where she like reabsorbs Jacob. In a scene that looked kind of cool, Freddy is trying to get out of Amanda. Yeah. And that's kind of fun, but Amanda's going to, like, drag him to hell. She's, the Wikipedia article says, Amanda seals Freddy away in time. Oh, sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I just thought it that. was, like, a door. Yeah, so did I. Because it is a literal door. It's just a literal door. And then the movie's over. We get to see baby Jacob with the remaining alive people and everything's good but we always have one little thing to show you that it's not over yeah. and we get to see the little girls doing their jump rope bit. jump roping and i'm enjoying that their dresses keep getting fluffier and fluffier each movie i think we probably peak though because like 88 89 that's got to be your height of a bigger bigger dress true true they i do. think now they're gonna start getting smaller oh. if it were in 2001 you'd be able to see their hips <laughs> A little hip bone. <laughs> that was the time of that, right? Yeah, I think so. And then we get a song at the end. Oh, yeah. Oh, cool. It's going to be a song about Freddy? No. <laughs> Never mentioned. <laughs> Just... It's actually, I think it's Cool Mo D, and I think he's talking about LL Cool J. Is he? Because they had the series of like diss tracks going back and forth. I think this either followed up or was the follow up to Mama Said Knock You Out. Oh. Because Cool Mo D and LL, they had a thing. Is this the second song that's in a Freddy movie that doesn't mention Freddy? Oh, there's there's quite a few. And the soundtrack has a lot of songs that aren't in the movie. And there are songs in the movie that aren't on the soundtrack. Oh. And this one got a, a music video as well. And in the video for this one, it was Houdini, uh, like another rap group. And 
they are dancing in the big house, in the, the Kruger house. Uh-huh. The hundred maniacs are in there. Uh, Freddy's there. They never mention Freddy or Nightmare on Elm Street. The yeah. song is not related at all, but the video takes place there. Yeah, and there's like dancing Freddies. In fact, they talk about Raiders of the Lost Ark. Oh. But they don't mention Nightmare <laughs> on Elm Street, even though they are in the house. The movie that this is about. Yeah. Interesting. Weird choice. Very weird. Well, that's it. We got through it. Yikes. Well, <laughs> final just... thoughts? Is is yikes your final thought? Yikes is my final thought. Yeah. I I don't know. I think this movie made me dumber. Yes. It it absolutely does. I think I lost more brain cells than normal watching this movie. You know how I used to complain about bad movies and you'd be of the mindset of like, yeah, whatever. You know what? Don't think about it. Yeah. I think when you start accepting bad things like this, yeah. your standards go down and you don't appreciate good work. Mm. And I think this movie's doing that to <laughs> me. But let's try to do the opposite. Okay. Let's remember the good times. Remember the Dream Warriors. Oh. Remember Kincaid? That oh, dude was Kincaid. awesome. Kincaid. What a remember good guy. Remember Tina? What a great performance yeah. in part one. So good. Okay, I'm back you know in like the happy. Nancy, maybe I uh, overreacted about how bad her <laughs> acting was. <laughs> maybe she was fine after all. I think she was great in comparison to this when movie. When you look at this stuff, wow. Oh, yikes. It's bad. It's a bad movie. I don't have anything clever to say about like, oh, yeah, but they were tackling some interesting subject matter. Like, I guess, but it's a bunch of bullshit. It is a bunch of bullshit. Yeah. Is that your final thought? My final thought, this movie... It was a bunch of bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> and that's Indy Randall, everybody. Yeah. There's some fun effects. That's the only good thing I can say, I guess. True. Well, we should maybe revise our rankings. Samantha, would you care to rank the five movies you have seen now? Um, I'm going to say one, three, two, four, five. I feel like you've changed... Yeah, I think I switched one. one and three. I I don't know. I think I'm one, three, four, two, five. Well, I for me, I would say one is in a class by itself. Three is tier two. Four and two are just like whatever, and they then better. five is junk. Yeah, I agree. So the second sponsor of this episode is brought to you by Taproot Spotlight, a service that helps businesses and organizations pay attention to the people that they serve. Taproot tells you the news about the people and companies that are most important to you and use that information internally to keep everybody on the same page or share it with the world in your newsletter, on your website, and on your social media challenges. Paying attention pays dividends. Find out more at taprootpublishing.ca slash spotlight. That's taprootpublishing.ca slash spotlight. All right. Well, you can join us back here in just a couple of days because we're not done yet. We're not even close. We are going to be watching the sixth installment of A Nightmare on Elm Street. Samantha, any guesses as to what the subtitle for this one is? Um, I think it's Nightmare on Elm Street 6, Freddy Just Won't Die. It's actually, <laughs> it's actually Freddy's Dead. Yeah. Oh, I was so close. But the opposite, but very yeah. close. Yeah. So this one, I think it wasn't ever titled A Nightmare on Elm Street 6. It's oh. just called Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare. Oh. But it is the sixth one. So but it's that... also not The Final Nightmare. <laughs> well, it kind of... We'll get into it. Okay. I don't want okay. to tell you Sounds anything. Good. No, I don't want to know anymore. Yeah. But okay, Freddy, <laughs> why won't you die? All right, join us next week, or no, just in a couple of days, for A Nightmare on Elm Street 6. Freddy, why won't you die? So we should mention that we are doing a crossover episode with another Alberta Podcast Network podcast, Three Kitchens, and they have so very nicely sent us some tasty treats to go with the movie Trick or Treat. So we'll be watching and discussing that with them, and that releases on October 25th. And also, if you want a good Halloween movie, go watch Trick or Treat. Yeah. That's Trick or Treat. It's yeah. very good. I've discussed it a little bit on this podcast in the past. <laughs> but go check that out and go listen to Three Kitchens. And you can find them wherever you're listening to us right now. Absolutely. 
Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.